Good afternoon, viewers. Welcome to another episode of Family Affairs on Super Screen Television. I am Shadiola, your anchor. And today we're going to be talking about pedophiles. How do we protect our children from pedophiles? With me in the studio to discuss this topic is a guest. You will get to meet my guest later on on the show. We're going to go on a very quick break and we'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back to the show. With me in the studio is my guest, a sex education coach, who is going to talk extensively on how you can protect your children from pedophiles and how you can identify who pedophiles are. Welcome to the show, Mrs. Fumi Shobanwa. Thank you very much, ma. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, very happy to have you on this show, ma. My pleasure, ma. Thank you very much, ma. Yes, ma. Ma, who are pedophiles? To a layman outside there that will... I want them to understand who pedophiles are because to some people it's a very big grammar. Pedophiles, pedophiles, they will not soy. So, yeah. so who are pedophiles? Okay. Pedophile is someone that is sexually attracted to children and have sexual desires for people's sins. Now for our viewers as well so that it can be simplified. When you say people's sins, people's sins are children before the age of puberty. They are very, very close to the age of puberty but they are not yet teenage, uh, they are teenagers. not yet teenagers. So we call them prepubescent, or we call that uh, age range a pubertal period. Actually, uh, generally now people use the word molester, molesters together as a pedophile. Okay. So I, uh, in a simple way, in a layman language, we can easily say pedophiles are typical child molesters. Okay. All they do is to prey on children. Nothing else. They don't have business with adults. So they prey on children, and uh, there are so there are some categories of pedophiles. But now, generally, even under the law, they've already put it under one umbrella. So they call uh, uh, the one that uh, molest children from the age of five to zero years. They are called infatophile. Okay. Infat from the word infat. infat. Okay. Then we have herbifophile. That's for uh, age uh, thirteen and above. But okay. in general, now even our word today, we use that word, it's not really common. They'll be looking at you, what are you saying? So, in a layman language, in a layman world, we call pedophile a typical child molester before even below age five or even before the age of puberty. They are still called pedophiles. In, in simple word, a typical child molester. Why do they pick on kids? Because if you look at children, you know, they are not mature. These kids are not mature. They don't really have that physique that should attract a man. So why do they, you know, prey on these kids? Why do they pick on these kids? Yeah. The reason why they prey on kids is that some of them have a mental mood, a personality strength. They will just, they just have that uh, desire for children. You no, know, when, when you are panting after something, you want to get by all means, or because that's your target. You want to meet your target. So what they focus on is not because of their dressing or they have that physique. You know, children, they are flawless. They don't have anything. Do they have it? No. But do you know so why? That innocence that attracts is, them. Exactly. The innocence in them attracts pedophiles, of house, okay. nothing else. And you know, it's just like their own way of specialization. So nothing else, but they just like them. They prey on them. I would like you to explain to our viewers once more the age uh, 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 limit. You call the particular uh, uh, group uh, infantophiles, and I want you to lay more emphasis on that, man. Okay. Uh, well, we have to talk about child molesters. Okay. Uh, there are some that fall between the age of five to zero years. Okay. They are called infantophiles. That's from the word infant. They, they prey on infants. Probably you've heard before hmm. uh, on the news or social network hearing about a child of six months being molested. Oh so those God. kind of oh people that molest kind that kind of three months old yeah, baby, six mo months old baby, yes, a those, year old baby, yes, ma. So those people that fall under that category. Actually, in general, they call them pedophile. But when you are talking about sex education, they are called infantophiles that they prey on infants. So those people that prey on uh, from age probably eight to twelve, they are called pedophile. That's their real name. Why from age thirteen to eighteen or nineteen, they are called herbivores. 
every every for foul. They prey on uh, what's it called teenagers, but in general they are called pedophile because the word infantophile they are not commonly used these days. They, they categorize them as pedophile. Thank you very much, ma'am. We're going to go on a very quick break, and we'll be right back. Stay with us. They have. Welcome back to the show. If you're just watching, if you're just joining us. We're talking about pedophiles. And with me in the studio, I have a sex education coach who is talking extensively on pedophiles and how we can protect our children from pedophiles. We know we see people on daily basis. Everyone is going to their different places, their places of work or going, going out to do one or two things. Pedophiles don't have a signboard that says, I am a pedophile, I am a pedophile. So what are the characteristics or features that are inherent? That will make you to know that this person is a pedophile. Yeah, oh, as you said earlier, you, pedophiles can't be identified by the facial look. If the, even the person very, sitting very close to you might be a pedophile. So it is not written on the face. You can't say, oh, this person is a pedophile. But there are some attributes mm -hmm. associated uh, with uh, pedophiles, which I'm going to mention few if time permits us. One of the attributes is that. They, they act childlike. What do I mean by this? They, they behave like a child. You know, they, they, they are playing on a child. So they, 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 they would they be want to come to the level, level of, that of that child, child to play with that child, to draw the child near. You are right, ma'am. So they will come to the level of that child so that they will, there, is a, there is a saying on an day that says, you want to catch a monkey, you act like a monkey. You will say, to be a fair mobo, I should be a boy. Exactly, that's how pedophiles do. They will come to the level of that particular child until they are able to assess the child. Uh, and once they have their way, they are good to go. Hmm. And the two stop there. They are not uh, okay with that one. They have to look for another one to pray upon. So they will keep on it's acting like simple. that. Exactly. They will be scavenging everywhere until they get something to eat. So they act shy like. And another thing is that the environment the man makes use of, for instance, for those people that do it one on one, do you know that pedophiles are now in uh, uh, numerous on social media too? Yes. Mm. For those people that do it probably within the neighborhood, within their jurisdiction, they will make sure for that particular child they want to prey upon, they will make sure that maybe the age range probably a, 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 a pre they want to, they, they are, their own area of specialization is prey on pre like age 8 to 12, between that age range. They will, you know, what they will like will be different from infa infants yes. or children between definitely, the age of years. Definitely. So the way they will decorate their room, the way the room, the interior, we will be so attractive to that child. Oh, wow! So, Uncle, this place is beautiful. They will make the child to feel at home. No children, they like something attractive. Mm. Another thing is that they don't go, they, they don't mind going extra my getting toys. Okay. And adults for gifts. that matter. Okay. Yes, they will get. They use gifts to attract children. Uh, yes, they use gifts we're to attract We're not saying all people that give gifts to children are pedophiles, but we're just saying that some pedophiles adopt this method. Yes, it's one of their attributes. Hmm. In fact, one of the attributes. Now, before I proceed, let me ship in uh, a, a scenario that happened, but in Ibadan, not here in Lagos. The, the baby happened to be two years plus. There is a particular guy in that particular building that always play with children. You no, know, some people naturally they love children. I, in, in, in particular, I like I love children. But that does not mean that all oh, everybody that loves the children, children are they are yes, they are pedophiles. There but this difference. one in particular happened to be a pedophile. Our people didn't know. Do you know what he used in learning that particular baby or toddler? It was a banana, not even bunch, just one. He gave that banana to the girl. You now, when the baby, little girl saw the banana, he, she, she, she was just so communicating. And before you know it, he took the girl inside. He had his way, and he, he took another route entirely. It was when the baby, even the mother was outside because he rented a shop in that apart, in that uh, compound. It was, she was busy kissing. She didn't know what had gone wrong. It was when the baby came outside. You no, know, the baby had been molested. And you, she couldn't express herself like that, but she was able to mention that person's name because she was accustomed to him. Hmm. So what happened? The case died down like that. So people can go extra mind in using gifts like chocolate. No children, they love chocolate, gifts, yes, toys. chocolate toys, something attra attractive. So this, these are what pedophiles do. Another thing is that you know that pedophiles, they even go extra mind in knowing the, your shy child life as in the likes and dislike of your child, of, oh of kids. Yes. 
some parents they don't even know what their children like maybe what they like or what they love let me use that word some pedophiles they know better they know that some people's children more than they do yes because they get closer to the child so they have so many attributes so many attributes so pedophiles they go extra way to be able to pray now let me ship in this man uh, for those, uh, not all pedophiles are physically present. So people, they toy on social media. That's why parents have to be very careful when they are giving gadgets to their children. No, we are in technology age it's now. Yes. So some, some pedophiles, they, they, they will make sure they, they befriend that child online. So they that they will even tell the child, don't tell anybody, don't tell you have a new friend on, uh, probably on so any social media. And even though the child might leave the house without the, the parents' consent and go and um, Meet the trap that has been set or, uh, already for him or her. So pedophiles can use any means, any not means. physical means alone. Are pedophiles predominantly males? Because once you hear pedophile, what co readily comes to the mind is, oh, there's a man. So pedophiles, are they predominantly males? Or are females also pedophiles? Uh, pedophiles can be male, can be female. So both genders can be pedophiles. But 80% uh, of pedophiles are male. 80%, why the 20% are female? So males are the main perpetrator, but females are not left out as well. So both genders are involved when it comes to pedophilic nature. Once uh, a, 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 a man can be found to be a, a pedophile, so also a woman can also be a pedophile. So both genders I can be what a uh, pedophile because the nature can be found in both genders. What advice do you have for parents on steps or ways to protect their children from pedophiles, especially single parents? Oh, I like this question. There are numerous ways that parents can help, as you said, mostly single parents. There are numerous ways. Number one, the first thing first is that parents, as parents, no matter how busy we have, no matter our schedule, yes. we just have to have time. time. Out of no time, yes. we must make time. time. Some parents, they don't even have time to even check their children. People ask questions about how the school runs went for that day. For that day. No. Some what happened to you in school today? What did you eat? What did you do? They don't have that time. All is centralized on uh, probably on nanny or caregiver or living uh, domestic staff. Don't, it's not easy to make ends meet. Yes. But as parents, no matter how, how busy we are, we have to create time. Mm. So we should, first thing first is that we should be what? Time conscious. We should have at least little time with our kids. You can't have the whole time, but at least five minutes, ten minutes goes a long way. You dialogue. Another thing is that parents should be approachable. Some parents, they are too strict. They are too strict today that their kids cannot even share what is mm, happening to them. Talk exactly, to them. can't even talk. Exactly. No, no, my can't. My mom, she will spank me. No, no, no. She's this and that. They will even prefer talking to an outsider. Yes, now than the parents. Than the parents. I would like to uh, share this uh, example. Uh, share this experience. The there was a particular girl from a wedding home in West Do, born with silver silver spoon. So there is a particular driver that was that was being attached to that particular child to be taken out to school okay. in the morning and after school to being picked bring her up. back home. Yes, yeah, so that nothing will delay her. Unfortunately for that little innocent girl, eight years old to be precise, she asked the driver one day that where did baby come from? No. Any children from the age of six, seven, eight, they are always, inquisitive. They're they very inquisitive. They, they want questions. to know. They want to know. And you know, our parents of this dispensation, even then, they will tell you, good, 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 and they will just shut you down. They won't tell you what's special. That's why sex education is very important. So, this girl, because the parents were not available, she used the avenue to ask the driver. The driver said, Don't worry, when you are back from school, I'm going to teach you uh, where baby comes from. Oh. Do you know how the driver went extra mile? He started fingering the girl. This thing lasted for a good five years. It was when the girl approached a uh, teenage period, when she was being taught in school, not really, not in depth like that. She was taught a little, then she, she opened up to her dad, not even her mom, one day. So they had to section the, the what's it called, the driver, but the deed had been done. done yes. yes. So we have to be very approachable. We should be available. We should be approachable. And one more thing is that we should, sex education is very important too. 
So at least we should introduce the children. Not you don't need to go extra. You don't need to be a pro before you start teaching your children about sex education. You have to start from okay. You teach them about body parts, the function. You know, once your children knows what the body parts does or what they do, you know they will be able. They will, they will be free from pedophiles. Though not all. At least when somebody touches their breast. Tell them these two things are called breasts, not orange. Uh, some parents will be saying your orange. Use the, the right the word, the appropriate yes, exactly. word. Exactly. It's not orange. It's not lemon. Yeah, it's not lemon. Lemon is a fruit. Breast is uh, breasts are part of the body. Yes. Tell them your vagina, your vulva. What's special there? So once you call it, it. So why can't you call the other the parts by their real name? That's why some people. Okay, a girl was molested too by a very close, a blood related person inside the house. Because the mother entrusted the baby into the hands of the uncle. The mother was calling the private part sausage. Uh -huh. Yes, the girl told the mom, uncle touched my sausage. That is good because that was her favorite snacks too. Always give uncle your sausage. There's love in sharing. Until one day when uncle finger deeply, I told her, mommy, then the girl had to raise up her clothes and she wow. me. So we have to be available. Teach your children the right word. Use Don't right use acronyms. Word. Yes, use the right word so that they can what assimilate and they can be free from pedophiles. What information should kids have in their mind or in their heads that will protect them from pedophiles? What information should we give to them? We know pedophiles exist. We know how dangerous they are, and we know what they can do to these kids. So what information should we make readily available for these kids that will protect them against pedophiles? Yeah. One thing is this. You know, let me use uh, those people without uh, private cars. Maybe we, those who are always bought their uh, public transport to work or anywhere they are going to. You know, some people they want, might want to offer your child or let me just say your children uh, opportunity. Oh, come, little girl, let me lap you. At least if you had told your kids right from home, don't or right from time, don't allow anybody to lap you. I used to tell my girl, oh, she's just one years old. Don't allow anybody to lap you. Yes. Don't allow anybody to lap you. Don't hold anybody. Don't kiss. That, these are the information you give your children. I want to teach children they learn fast. Yes. Once you sell them, it sticks to their They're memory. Very don't allow. Yes. Very smart. Don't allow anybody to kiss you. Don't kiss. It is not appropriate. And even you tell them that the particular set of people that can touch their private parts, probably children that cannot clean up their body yet. Okay, okay, it's only our, your nanny that can wash your bum, but after using the restroom, you give them concession. Teach your uh, about privacy too. You have to let them know about privacy. Yes. You know some children, they can walk nakedly, they can sit anyhow. Yes. No pedophiles, they are attracted to children, nothing else. So teach them about Notice. privacy. Yes. And another thing is touch. That's what's under a uh, boundary. Yes, some some children they can wear some and maybe touch a person's hair, your beard, yeah. And some mothers or father will be smiling. She's just a child, and you understand. That's how it starts. You don't know with you, so just set boundary. Set Stop. Boundaries. Don't allow anybody. Yeah, boundaries number one. Make your thing. Don't set allow boundaries. anybody. Yes, to lap you. No, it's not only their child though. Even uh, male children who are not left out. At the course of the week, a boy, twelve years old, was molested by a man. Or I should call him a guy now, a gay. He molested. He had an access with a 12-year-old guy. So the mother had to bring it off to social media and say, oh, please, you people should come to my head. What happened? Wherever the boy sleep, the boy will be screaming because it, that thing has affected his mental health. It's traumatic. So, yes, it's traumatic. He's already expressing, expressing depression. So, say, tell, you have to teach them about boundary. Yes, yes boundary. And another thing is... Uh, uh, okay, I said under that boundary we have touch. We have yes. good and bad touch. Another topic for another day is a topic on its own. Teach your children what good touches and what bad touches are. These are what and this is key. Don't uh, don't don't, don't, don't dress your children. To walk I think exactly uh, what they have uh, they are probably physical. You don't even do teach them. Let them be wearing something if it is seen uh, on their way or light clothes at home. And once they have physical, you can just sing that to them. Go to your room. Uh, and if they have visitors, external visitors coming to the house, tell them don't go to anybody's room. Yes, because you don't, anything can happen within a single of an eye. Tell them if you want another thing that when they, want, when they want to enter into anybody's room, even their parents' room, teach them how to knock. How to knock. Can I call me? They say no. Go back. These are the things you teach your children to safeguard them from predator. And one more thing, tell them not to be 
in a lonely place with a stranger. Beautiful. Yes. They should not be in a lonely place with a stranger. Strangers. And they should learn how to say no to turn gifts down. Except if you give and some children, once they look at your face, they will say, thank you. No matter how you force it on them, except their parents are collect it now, is your daddy's brother. Mm. Yes. Get out to turn yes, not everything they will see. Grab, grab, grab. With time, that person can use it against them. Probably the person is a pedophile using it as a trap. So parents should be very, very careful. Talk to your children. We're going to go on a very short break. I know you're learning because I'm also learning too. I'm learning new things and I know you're learning new things too. We're going to go on a very quick break and we'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back to the show. I know you're learning new things. I'm also learning. Do pedophiles regret their action because we know they inflict so much injuries on those children? Do they really regret their actions after they are caught? That's the only condition. Once they are caught, they will feel regretful. But once they are not caught, no, they are shameless. They will continue their acts. But once they are caught, they will feel remorse. We know we are human beings. So they are human beings, blood runs through their face. So and they will be looking for means of uh, being pardoned. So definitely they will succumb. So they always feel remorseful and regretful of their hearts. You know, okay, even what we are even saying about them, these are the people that have been caught and came out to tell us about pedophiles, how they ask, what they do, so they always feel it grateful. What can the government do to arrest this situation? Because I don't think parents alone can handle this. So what, how can the government help us? Mm, there is a saying that it takes two to tangle. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, a family from family a, a forms a nation, you understand? Family, then nation will be, we, we form, from a family, nations will be formed. So what I want to uh, say on here is that Governments do they have their own role to play. Okay. Kudos to them. They are doing well. Okay. Now I would like to talk about the war that happened. In fact, three days ago, wow. not in Lagos State, in Ekiti State, a man of 38 years raped a girl of 14 years. In fact, good kudos to their government. They didn't spear the man. Beautiful. The man, in fact, is all, all on social media. The man has been arrested, not just been arrested and given a life sentence to a life imprisonment, which I'm very, very happy about, so that other pedophiles outside there can learn their lesson. I live, oh, life imprisonment, no, I don't want to go there. Maybe they can desist from these evil hearts. So government, are doing, they are doing so well. And we have so many centers in which, even in Lagos State, in which one can easily run to, to seek advice. In case any child is being molested, two children can be taken there and be admonished and get revived back to their normal life. In your so, own opinion, Ma, what is the best punishment for a pedophile that you think should serve as the best punishment for them? My, from my own opinion, as far as I'm concerned, as a sex educationist, in fact, the best judgment for them should, is that they should be castrated. They, are, they have that thing yeah. to be doing up and down, to be dangling up and down, molesting innocent children. The best thing is just that, that their mouth would should be castrated so that once there is nothing to use, so how are they going to prey on the children? Because belief is that under law that pedophiles, once they are able to penetrate with that child, so they are called pedophiles. But once they are unable to penetrate, we, just, we, don't, we don't still we don't categorize them as pedophiles then. So that's thing they are using to penetrate, to molest innocent kids. They should castrate it exactly. so they will become a castrated uh, dog. Exactly. That's all. And the children will have peace. They will have and peace around, of mind. And move around freely. Exactly. That's what it. advice do you have for viewers at home, parents, single parents? What advice do you have for them? Parents, viewers at home, nannies, because not only parents, because it's only, it takes two to have babies or kids, so it takes many to care for that particular child. So uh, caregivers, parents at home, viewers, my advice is this. Please, have time, as I said earlier, try to be approachable as you have time for your children. Don't leave your responsibility for nanny, for caregivers. They have their own mm. roles to play, but you should, your own particular, that particular role that God has assigned for you should not be played, for, uh, played by someone else. Try to sensitize your children. Please, if you have not started sensitizing your children on sex education, it's very important to look at me. Listen very well. I need your attention. Yes. You don't need to be a pro before you start educating your children or sex education. Nobody is an island of knowledge. You have to start from somewhere. If you don't have idea, get book, go online, make researches, meet coaches that can help you. There are numerous 
uh, resources, you can read up. There are numerous sites you can face it so that you can help your young ones, your, your children. The safety of your children should be your priority because that's the reason why you are, you are working because of them. So you have to work, pay attention to them. Sex education is very important in every home. Don't subtract it. As education as mathematics and English are very important, so sex education is very important. Thank you. Thank you very much, madam, for coming on the show. Thank you very much. We're so happy you came on this show. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Viewers at home, this is where we call it a day. Thank you for watching this episode of Family Affairs. Until next time when we bring you another episode, I am Shadiola, and I'm saying remain special and bye-bye.